people spend hours upon hours pouring their time into researching and trying to find the next big stock when most of the time they never find it. In fact, did you know that 94% of US fund managers underperform the S&P 500 over 20 years? These are the guys who have gone to college and dedicated their lives to picking stocks. What if I told you there was a better or even easier way to invest your hard-earned money to becoming truly wealthy? I'm talking about posted up, sitting on the beach, loved one by your side, ice cold brewski in hand on a nice Monday afternoon type wealthy. That is where my favorite type of investments come into play, ETFs. An ETF or an exchange traded fund is a fund that usually tracks a certain index. When you are investing money inside an ETF, that money is getting spread through many different stocks that make up that fund, like we'll talk about in today's video. Most of the time when it comes to investing in ETFs, the best way you can do this is to find the ETFs that you wanna invest in, set up your automatic deposit into your portfolio, then automatically invest that money into these ETFs sit back and let the magic of compound interest happen. I personally love investing in ETFs because it takes the guessing and the stress out of investing in single stocks. You're not trying to find that perfect needle in a haystack. When it comes to investing in ETFs, the simplicity is there. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing seven different ETFs that are some of my personal favorites to help you go from broke to wealthy over time. Now let's jump right into the first one on the list and that is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, also known as VU. VU's objective as a fund is to invest in every company that makes up the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is an index that represents 500 of the largest US companies. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Amazon, etc. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, most investors have a very hard time outperforming the S&P 500 over the long term. That's why most of the time you're honestly better off just investing in the S&P 500 every single month. And there's proof in that statement. The chart illustrates the relationship between holding period and the probability of a positive return in the S&P 500. As shown, the S&P 500 produced a positive return during every rolling 20 year period in history. That means any investor that bought an S&P 500 index fund definitely made money provided that they held the index fund for at least 20 years. Now, the biggest thing to take away here from that chart before we jump into the actual details of VU is that patience is key when it comes to investing. When you stop thinking about the short term of an investment and what the price fluctuation looks like on a week to week basis and start focusing on the long term, sit back, forget it, don't look at it every single day, and that compound interest will work for you in the long term. VU has an expense ratio of 0.03% and a current dividend yield of 1.3%. The market price currently for VU is sitting at $476.77. Now VU's year-to-date performance is sitting at just under 9.5% and is a four out of five on Vanguard's risk first reward scale. This means Vanguard classifies this as a moderate to aggressive fund and is subject to wide fluctuations in share price because the fund is entirely made up of common stocks. Now, as far as the top sectors that make up VU, the top three sectors are technology with nearly a 30% weight in the fund, Next is financials with a 13% weight, followed by healthcare with a 12.5% weight. Now, if you are an investor who is strictly looking to invest inside the S&P 500, VU may be the ETF for you. Now, before we get into the next ETF on the list, if you are looking for a brokerage to actually purchase or invest these ETFs in, Public is one that I actually use and recommend. Public also offers different types of investments inside their platform that you can take advantage of from stocks, ETFs, to crypto, to even taking advantage of their high yield savings account that's currently giving a 5.1% interest rate. If you guys are looking to give public a try, I do have a link down below in my description. I'll pin a comment as well for you guys to try it out. Now the next ETF on the list is one of my personal all time favorites and that is the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, also known as VTI. Now, VTI is very similar to the previous ETF we just talked about, VU, although there are a few differences between the two ETFs. Now, the main difference here between VTI and VU is that VU is entirely made up of large cap stocks. With VTI, you're also getting exposure to mid and small cap stocks, because when you invest in VTI, you are literally investing inside the entire US stock market. And to be exact, 3,731 is the total amount of stocks that make up this fund. So quickly how that works, if you invest $1,000 into VTI, 
That $1,000 is getting separated into 3,731 different stocks based on different weights. That money is getting spread and invested into all of those different companies, again, all at separate weights whenever you invest in VTI. Now, VTI has an expense ratio of 0.03% and a current dividend yield of 1.29%. The market price currently for VTI is sitting at $257.24. VTI's year-to-date performance is sitting at 8.74% and is also a four out of five on Vanguard's risk versus reward scale. Now the top sectors differ a bit from VU's. VTI's top three sectors are technology with a 32.3% weight, second is consumer discretionary with a 14.5% weight, and then followed by industrials with a 13% weight in the fund. And then for the top holdings that make up VTI are the exact same as VU. So you can see there are a lot of overlap in these two different ETFs. So instead of investing both in the same portfolio, what I've chosen to do is inside my retirement accounts, it is strictly made up of VTI. And then I invest in VU in my taxable brokerage accounts along with the five other ETFs I'm gonna be talking about on today's video. So for the past two ETFs I just went over, they have been strictly US focused ETFs. Now I'm a big believer in the United States and the US economy, but that doesn't mean I don't want some exposure in other markets. And that is where the next ETF on the list comes into play. It is the Vanguard Total International ETF, also known as VXUS. International stocks can provide exposure to a wider array of economic and market forces across regions and nations. Different markets and economies can and often do produce returns that vary from the US market. VXUS seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap X US Index, which measures the investment return of stocks issued by companies located outside the United States. VXUS has an expense ratio of 0.08% and currently does not offer a dividend. The market price for VXUS is sitting at just under $60 a share. VXUS year-to-date's performance is sitting at just under 38% and is a five out of five on Vanguard's risk versus reward scale. This means that Vanguard classifies this as an aggressive fund and is subject to extremely wide fluctuations in share price. When you invest into VXUS, you are spreading your money across 8,566 different stocks that make up this fund. As far as the makeup of VXUS, its makeup spreads across many different regions in the world. Majority of the fund is made up from the European markets while the rest comes from emerging markets, the Pacific, Middle East, as well as North America being Mexico and Canada. Some of the top holdings in the fund are Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, ASML Holding, Toyota, Nestle, Samsung, and Tencent, just to name a few. Now, although you do get exposure to international markets when you invest in Americanized companies like Nike and Apple, it is still nice for me to know that I'm getting at least a bit more exposure to actual companies that are outside the United States in case something terrible happens to the overall US economy. God willing, that never happens. Now this next ETF on the list is one that I like to invest in for a more conservative approach, even though it is also made up entirely of common stocks. This ETF also offers a nice dividend that it pays out to its shareholders every single quarter. And this ETF is known as Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, also known as SCHD. Ideally, when it comes to these types of dividend focused ETFs, the main goal with these is to be able to live off the cash flow that comes from the ETF through its dividend. The reason for this is, is because you can use these dividend payments as almost like a paycheck, and in return, you're not having to touch your initial investment inside the ETF whatsoever. And the best part about that is if it's generating enough income from the dividend that's being paid out every single quarter, and you never have to actually touch that initial investment, well, that's something that you can pass down as a legacy to your loved ones. One of the reasons I love SCHD so much is because, well, it's boring and also relatively safe. Now with SCHD, you're not gonna get your high flying tech or AI type stocks. These are your big boring companies that you and I have most likely heard of before. And having some safety built in with defensive type dividend stocks is always a nice feature in any portfolio. SCHD tracks the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index and it has a current dividend yield of 3.47%. Now its current year-to-date performance is lacking a bit, coming in at just under 2%, but over a 10 year period, it has kept pace with the likes of VU and VTI. Some of the companies that make up the top holdings inside SCHD are Verizon, Chevron, Lockheed Martin, Pepsi, and UPS, just to name a few. Something else I really like about SCHD as an ETF is not only has the price continued to grow over the years, but so has its dividend. And the reason why I like that is as a shareholder of SCHD, every time that dividend increases, you technically get a pay raise from the dividends that are being paid out to you. 
So in my opinion, SCHD is another long-term perspective that if you just stick with it, it's going to continue to pay you dividends in more ways than one. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay, never mind. On to the next one. Now, one thing all four of these previous ETFs lacks is the exposure to the real estate market. Therefore, the fifth ETF on today's list is the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, also known as VNQ. VNQ invests in stocks issued by real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs. And these are companies that purchase office buildings, hotels, and other real types of property. VNQ has an expense ratio of 0.12%, and the current price is sitting at $83. And 94 cents. Its year to date return is currently at a loss, sitting at negative 4.17%, which comes from the recent changes in the interest rate environment. The higher the interest rates go up, the more real estate is most likely to continue to go down. Now, like SCHD, VNQ also offers a nice dividend yield of 3.58%. Now, as for the structure of this fund, VNQ is made up of 159 different REITs with sectors that range from data centers, healthcare properties, hotels, and resorts to retail and self-storage units. Some of the top holdings that make up VNQ are companies like American Tower, Simon Property Group, Public Storage, and the very popular Realty Income. Overall, VNQ is a great way to gain some exposure to the real estate market while also capturing some cash flow from the dividends along the way. Now, since launching in 1999, this ETF has demonstrated a history of outperformance, typically beating the S&P 500. It has over 320 plus more returns than the S&P, and this monster of an ETF is none other than QQQ. Invesco QQQ ETF tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, giving you access to the performance of the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ. The fund is made up of 101 different holdings, with the top 10 holdings being Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, Broadcom, Google, Tesla, and Costco. The reason QQQ has seen such major growth over the past few decades is because of the major concentration it has in the tech sector. Technology currently makes up over 57% of the sector allocations inside QQQ, followed by consumer discretionary with a weight of 19%, and then healthcare with a weight of nearly 7%. QQQ's expense ratio is a bit higher than the others on the list, coming in at 0.2%, but it's nothing that breaks the bank. It also clearly makes up for it with the performance that this fund has shown over the years. Now, looking at this chart, you can see how QQQ compares to the S&P 500. This is showing you what your investment would have looked like if you would have invested $10,000 into QQQ versus the S&P 500 10 years ago. The S&P would have turned the $10,000 into nearly $34,000 to where QQQ would have turned that $10,000 into over $56,000. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, guys, is that past performance does not always equal future performance. What that means is that just because QQQ has been the outperformer over the past few years over the S&P, that doesn't mean that's going to stay consistent for the next 10 years to come. Now, QQQ may be that type of ETF for the investor that is bullish on tech and other industries that is growing through innovation. Now, the last and final ETF on today's list is another sector-focused ETF, and that is the Vanek Semiconductor ETF, also known as SMH. SMH seeks to replicate as closely as possible the MVIS US listed semiconductor 25 index, which is intended to track the overall performance of companies involved in the semiconductor production and equipment. Now, for those of you that don't know, semiconductors are the vital component for the technologies that you and I depend on every single day. From our cars to our cell phones to even the washer and dryer, all of these rely on semiconductors to operate. Now, not only that, but something that has been the craze as of late and also leads me to believe that we are in a revolutionary era when it comes to technology is AI. And guess what is a large component to AI? You guessed it, semiconductors. In AI, semiconductors help to process massive amounts of data quickly, enabling faster and more efficient machine learning algorithms. Now, for me, I tend to be a bit bullish on the semiconductor industry over the next 10 years with where I think technology and AI is going. Now, what I could end up doing is trying to find that one stock, that one needle in the haystack that I think is going to be the winner in the semiconductor space for over the next 10 years. But ultimately, the chances of me doing that are very, very slim. And instead, I would rather just own all of the semiconductor companies so that way I don't have to stress and know that hopefully I pick the right one for the next 10 years. Instead, if I own all of them inside the ETF known as SMH, I can sit back, have that nice cold brewski on the beach while I make my money 
in SMH. Now let's dive a bit more into the details of the actual fund. SMH has an expense ratio of 0.35% and a current price of $224.91. The year to date returns for SMH are sitting at 28.64%. And the other bonus here with SMH is it also pays out a dividend. Its current dividend yield is sitting at 0.48%. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that out of the 26 holdings that make up SMH, three of those holdings make up over 40% of the fund. And those stocks in order of weight are NVIDIA, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Broadcom. Now with such a high concentration on just three stocks inside this ETF, this tends to be a bit more of a risky type play. So for me, I tend to keep its overall percentage inside my portfolio relatively lower. Now, if you are bullish on the semiconductor and the AI space like I am, then SMH may be an ETF for you. Now with that guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys are interested in finding out how I would invest, if I had to start over from scratch today, check out that video right here. Take care guys.